In recent times, the educated people across the world who are conscientious and far-sighted have become increasingly concerned about our environment and not without reason. We human beings, the most fortunate among all living creatures to have been endowed with the greatest amount of intelligence and a rich complex storehouse of emotions have very sadly also turned out to be the most selfish and the most ruthless of all creatures on earth. Our selfishness is evident in the manner in which we are continuously consuming up the resources that nature has granted for all living beings. The speed with which we are draining the earth's crust, cutting down forests, reclaiming land from ocean and even piercing the ocean beds to quench our insatiable thirst for oil. Our ruthlessness is also manifest in our various indiscriminate activities which we are carrying on which are resulting in polluting the atmosphere that is the land, the air and the sea. Added to this is the element of huge amounts of solid waste which includes an alarming quantity of electronic garbage, untreated biomedical waste and toxic material which are being dumped indiscriminately all over the land and a significant portion at sea. It is really ironical that the element which constitutes almost three quarters of the earth which appears to be indomitable due to its massive size, awesome size, the force and its unpredictability and which is the place from where all life forms have evolved is itself under threat. It is under threat from the ultimate species which owes its very existence to this element. Of course, the species I am talking about is human being and the threat is marine pollution. In this program, we shall take a look at the causes of this problem, analyze the implications of marine pollution on the environment and try to understand the importance of the various steps and measures that are needed to be taken to control it and prevent further damage. But first, let us begin our discussion with a basic understanding of some terms that we shall be using in our program. C. It is defined as a body of salt water smaller than an ocean and covering a large part of the earth. Ocean. It is a large and vast body of salt water which covers about three-fourth area of earth's surface. Our earth consists of 71% of water and 29% of land. Human beings inhabiting the land are today increasingly depending on the ocean for various resources like food, minerals, petroleum and gas. About 70% of oxygen needed by organisms is generated by marine plants and thus they play an important role in oxygen and carbon dioxide cycle. The important features of ocean are Currents These are produced by rotation of earth and changes in temperature at the poles and the equator waves and tides. They are produced by wind and lunar attrition. Continuity 
all oceans are connected. Light Sunlight is able to reach down to the depth of 200 meters only. Temperature On the surface, temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius, while in depth, it ranges from 1.5 to 4 degrees Celsius. Pressure the atmospheric pressure at sea level is taken as one atmosphere. For each 10 meters of depth, the pressure increases by one atmosphere. Salinity, it is about 35%. More than half the world's population lives within a range of 200 kilometers from the sea coast. India too has a coastal area of about 6,000 kilometers and 25% of the total population of our country is living in this area. Eight states of Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Urissa and West Bengal and three metro cities of Mumbai, Kolkata and Chennai are located near the sea. Marine habitat is one of the largest as far as total area is concerned. The space available to the organisms in marine habitat is about 300 times more than those available to the organisms on land habitat. Marine pollution this term has been defined in various ways. Few of them are Destruction of quality of water A contamination that kills marine life and disturbs the ecosystem A change in physical, chemical and biological properties of water due to various human activities so that it becomes less suitable or even harmful for various organisms. And finally, introduction by man directly or indirectly of substances or energy into the marine environment resulting in such deleterious effects as harm to living resources, hazards to human health, hindrance to marine activities, impairment of quality for the use of water and reduction of amenities. This last definition has been given by a team of UN experts on the subject. Causes of Marine Pollution Pollution by oil is the main cause that affects the marine ecosystem. The main sources through which oil reaches the marine environment are Oil tankers, their washing, leakage and accident. Shipping operation at coastal belts. Oil drilling, leakage of pipelines and accidents on oil rigs and war among nations. About 2 billion tons of oil from shipping and oil drilling work and approximately 3 million tons due to washing of oil tankers is thrown into oceans every year. The floating oil spreads out due to ocean currents and waves affecting birds, fish and other marine life. A part of such oil spills sinks to the bottom and largely remains unbroken. Hydrocarbons are the chief components of oil. The mud at the bottom of the seas has been found to contain 70 mg of hydrocarbons per kg of mud. At the sea coasts of Mumbai, the oil pollution recorded is 1.9 mg per litre.
Cities and villages located near sea shores dump their sewage directly into the sea. Sewage is a diluted solution containing minerals and organic matter. It also includes human excreta, soaps, detergents, metals, glass, rubbish, garden waste and sludge from cesspools. If sewage is not properly handled after it is produced or if the effluent received at the end of sewage treatment is not of desired standard, then there is every possibility of water getting polluted. Industrial effluents are of various types and are worst pollutants. Industrial effluents contain acids, hydroxides, sulfates, sulfides, chloride, amines, phenols, cyanides and many other compounds in various concentrations. More than 10 lakh type of organic chemicals like phenols, detergents and dyes find their way to the sea via rivers and other water bodies. Inorganic chemicals like mercury and lead are also very dangerous for marine life. About 500 tons of mercury enters the marine environment every year along with different types of wastes. Radioactive waste from atomic reactors and nuclear power plants are also let out into the ocean. Disposal of radioactive waste is increasing because many countries are shifting towards nuclear power. Submarines that carry nuclear weapons are similarly capable of polluting the ocean and their number is also increasing rapidly. Testing of atomic weapons inside oceans also contributes towards radioactive wastes like strontium-90 and cesium-132. Meanwhile, other radioactive elements like uranium and thorium are already present in the sea naturally but in smaller quantities. More than a hundred types of pesticides like algaecides, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides and rodenticides used mainly in agricultural fields finally reaches the sea. The toxic pesticides accumulate in marine organisms and finally reach us. Among these, the most harmful ones are DDT, and its degraded form DDE. Tin cans, plastic goods, wooden containers, cardboard cartons and papers are some examples of non-industrial wastes. Among these, plastic is most dangerous as it releases phthalates, dioxin and mercury which are toxic and enter the food chain. About 1,50,000 tons of plastic rope and nets remain in sea every year after shipping operations. In 2006, scientists from Plymouth University reported that small granules less than 20 microns in size are present in the ocean water. These granules are spread over the surface of the sea or ocean water at an approximate count of 3 lakh per square kilometer as well as at the bottom of the seas and oceans also at a rate of 1 lakh per square kilometer. Dumping or immersing idols after completion of religious rituals and functions also pollutes the sea 
because these have toxic oil paints with heavy metals like lead. Among all the causes of marine pollution that we have discussed so far, the most detrimental effects are produced by oil pollution and there are many reasons for this. Oil layers spreading over the surface of water reduces oxygen dissolution and light penetration. These two factors affect respiration in organisms and photosynthesis in plants. Phytoplankton and zooplankton are also affected adversely by oil layers. A French oceanographer Jacques Casusto reported that flora and fauna are now confined to the depth of 100 feet only instead of 250 to 300 feet as found earlier. Waste from oil refineries and discharge of oil from ships and tankers often results in killing fishes on a massive scale. This happens as the gill slits are clogged by oil, thus asphyxiating the fishes. Organisms living on seashores are also coated with oily layers and eventually die. Birds are especially vulnerable to damage from oil coating. Oil deposition on feathers reduces flying capacity and aromatic compounds present in oil affects respiration when it reaches the stomach along with food material. Many toxic compounds, cycloparaffin, benzothiophane, are having adverse effects on nervous, respiratory, reproductive and dermal systems of human being. Toxic matters present in the industrial and agricultural wastes as also in sewage affects organisms adversely. Oil pollution reduces the aesthetic value and so tourism is reduced. Adriatic Sea pollution has greatly reduced tourism in Italy. In order to control the adverse effects of marine pollution, various steps are required to be taken. As the maximum damage is caused due to oil, its transportation through sea routes has to be carefully managed to avoid leakage and accidents. Similarly, oil pipelines have to be properly maintained to avoid leakage. The washing of ships and oil carrying tankers in coastal areas has also to be avoided. The oil waste products from drilling operations and refineries should be discharged into the sea only after proper treatment. To reduce the impact of pollution from urban sewage and industrial effluents, treating plants have to be set up for removing or reducing the toxic effects of these discharges before they are released into the ocean. In the agricultural fields which are situated in coastal areas, green manure and biopesticides should be used instead of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. All types of nuclear activities in oceans should be banned. Dumping of plastic goods in oceans and seas should also be controlled and suitable penalties or punitive actions imposed on the offenders. Removal of oil layer should be done by absorbing agents, mending agents, gelling agents, sinking agents and biodegrading agents. Global Warming and Change in the Nature of Ocean Waters 
This is also a type of marine pollution resulting in the change of the nature of ocean waters which takes place on account of carbon dioxide. A study conducted in UK suggested that the amount of carbon dioxide in the ocean water has increased from 280 to 380 parts per million in the past 50 to 60 years. Carbon dioxide dissolves in the seawater forming carbonic acid and this carbonic acid is changing the nature of the ocean water into acidic. Increasing acidity will not affect the large animals but food chain will be affected. Those animals will be seriously affected whose body shells are made up of calcium carbonate, for example, mollusks, oysters, etc. By what we have discussed so far, the enormity of the damage that can be caused to the environment due to marine pollution must have become amply clear. Now it is not that the developed countries are ignorant of this fact, but unfortunately most of them are taking a very myopic viewpoint considering only the immediate future. Their sole aim is of course to extract as much revenue as can be generated in the shortest possible time without any consideration for the consequences. On the other hand, countries which are underdeveloped or developing are either ignorant of the dangers or are finding it too expensive to adopt and implement the measures that are required to reduce the damaging effect on the environment through marine pollution. The long and short of it is that therefore, almost the entire world is continuing to move ahead on a path of self-destruction, not heeding to the signals which are being given to us by the dying birds, the fishes, the algae, the untimely snows and rains, the extended winters and the scorching summers and all types of marine life or the absence of it. Time is ticking away fast and unless we open our eyes to these wake up calls even now and take corrective and concrete steps immediately to stop further damage, it might be too late. Let us therefore all join together and try to spread awareness about the dangers of marine pollution to the environment so that all of us can live in a planet that is greener where the air is fresh and fragrant to inhale and where we can have the blessings of clear, blue, deep, dark and pure masses of sea and ocean water. <laughs>